How will they walk in Paris every day and stand along the last great army of foot soldiers, used to root marches hour after hour from the cobblestones of Picardy, and though, as uniformed officers, the city was wide open to them, so that there was nowhere they could not go, nothing they could not afford. They rarely went anywhere very far from their room on the Rue de Pussy, but Sam could barely keep his balance with Jenny on his arm. He had to sit down, off in parks and cafes, to look at her, get his bearing, some sort of objective, there she is, which only made it worse, made him drunker than before. He drank pots of coffee, French coffee, until he shook with it, but could not shake the sleep that hung all day around his eyes, a sleep of waking dreams, in which she was walking, walking, walking on his arm. He kept pouring into her, until so she gave him back with a kiss, then started all over again. Soldiers could kiss anyone. They could kiss in public, and they did so. For it wasn't just Paris. They stay like air. Yeah. It was practically one patriotic duty to kiss soldiers back to the front. But this was something else. Waking on, on the Rue de Bussy, in the simple sous de trois room, the kitchen the size of a closet, the water closet down the hall, single bed, and curtains with daffodils as birds of paradise. They really were. They were officers, God damn it, they could afford better than this. But it was what Jenny wanted. She stopped at a flower stall, saw the door, and asked at the shop. She was an angel, a bluebird, a Canadian. The French could refuse her nothing. The son was away at the front. He had been at her done. Her tea. They kept his room just the way it was until he returned. Stan and Jenny, standing in the doorway, with the mother behind them. Both knew the boy was dead. When the dam had gone, leaving them the keys, they burst into tears. But what I was going to say, waking in that room, as bare as the mother's hopes, pale blue and white wallpaper, gradually fading into color, Stan would swim up from somewhere, the trenches, Sullivan Street, a dugout thick with firm moral fumes, and there, across his leg, lay the pressure of her bent knee, a greater and a less than simple overlap, stupefying arithmetic with soft geometry. That was at the start of the song. All along his length she lay, the crust of love between their bellies and their thighs, her breast parted for his chest and a hand beneath his neck to keep him in place till she woke. A moment, as if he stood in a forest clearing, while sad sentence brought his mind into the present, and then joy sprang at him like wolves from the woods. They smelled all the smells in the room, and the house, and the funk of his uniform, the blossom of May, and heard all the sounds, and the waveless were breathing to the stirring of the street. This was not the countryside, not anymore. This was war, was the war, was the war. Chasing a runaway horse, we see and we reap out of season. 
Come away, love, from the board. Come away, love, from the window. Come away, love, from the stairs. The cattle are gone from the meadow. The paddock stands open and bare. Why do you stand in the hallway? Why do you stop at the door? I will be with you for always. Come away, love, from the board. <laughs> Why do I do this? Anyway, there is, there is, there is a lot more in this little book, so hopefully it will go somewhere But thank you for launching it on its way, all of you for coming here. And a special thanks to my good friends Kevin and Chris, and above all to the men and women and the four footed officers of the Mount Unit, without whom uh, not only would this event not be happening, but the uh, first book wouldn't have been finished because there would have been no story, and then there would have been this book, and there would have been many other things, not least the, uh, the uh, safety and uh, civic pride that I feel in my neighborhood when I was one or two of them crawling by. Thank you all very much.